Hey there, let's have a quick look on how you can create a three-point lighting setup in KeyShot 7 using the HDRI editor. And we are going to end up doing something like this. Um, but before I start, I want to just quickly explain what a three-point lighting setup is. And as stated on Wikipedia, it's a uh, standard method used a lot in uh, theater and still photography and so forth. Um, and as you see here, it consists of a key light, which is like the main illuminator of the scene. There's a fill light from the other side, filling in the completely black shadows. And then there's a backlight, also often referred to as a rim light, that fills in, uh, or it creates a rim light uh, around your object and uh, separates it from the background. So let's go ahead and create that in KeyShot. All right. So in your scene, go to, your, to the environment tab and hit the create new environment. And let's call it three, whoops, three point lighting number two. In KeyShot 7, you can edit your HDRI directly in this uh, project tab. You don't have to pop open any window. And um, you can also always adjust the, uh, the background color. And as a start, let's move down and change that to black. Okay, so with that done, we go back up and we add in a new pin by hitting the plus sign and add pin. And I want to start rename it um, to our key light. The key light is coming from the left or the right in an angle, so uh, we can click here on the model if we want to have the light to come from the left side and try to uh, to see what it looks like from different angles, like a bit from above or straight on, maybe down here as well, not recommended. I think that uh, this position is quite cool. Let's uh, adjust the size a bit and the brightness as well. And be sure that your light is bright enough, but that it doesn't wash out. So if we put the brightness at, let's say five or even seven, we start to lose details here in the texture because the light is too bright. So you don't want that. Seems like if we go back to four, that is great. So hit done here and then go back to the tab here and hit the plus sign again to add a new pin. And while we're edit editing that one, I like to uh, hide this key light so we only see the contribution of this new light. And let's add in um, the rim light or the backlight, which is uh, this light that, that creates a contour around um, the object and separates it, separates it from the uh, background. So we have to find a position where the light is behind our model which by the way is downloaded from 3dscans.com, a great site for 3D scanned statues and stuff like that. Um, and I wanna take the radius down so we don't have this uh, blading of the light into the object. So we only have this uh, highlighting of the rim, or the edge of the product or model. So let's move it up a bit maybe. Mm. I think somewhere around here is good. All right, like this. Let's see if we should pump up the brightness. Could go for two, I guess. So then I like to turn on this key light again to see how it looks together. And I think the key light is actually a bit too bright. So I take that down to 3.5. Maybe even down to three. All right. So now for the last um, pin, 
hit the plus sign, add new pin, and rename that one to the fill light. So the fill light is uh, the one making sure that the areas here on the shadow side is not too dark. Um, of course, if that's what you want, then you shouldn't use any fill light, but uh, for more neutral lighting setup, it's good to, uh, to just ease out some of these uh, dark shadows. So let's uh, hide the rim and the, the fill, or <laughs> let's hide the rim and the key light to see what uh, this one does. And let's add it in. Oops, like this, add it in. Here from the side in an angle. And we don't want this one to be very bright. We just need to uh, ease the shadows a bit. So maybe all the way down at point two. Let's check it together with the key light. Seems good. And then turn on this rim light as well. Seems like I accidentally moved the rim light. Uh, so it's actually a good thing to lock the uh, pins when they are in the right position. Oops, let's unlock them again and hide them. And reposition this. Uh, and reposition the rim light. And as always, if you feel that stuff are updating a bit too slow, then you can always go to the performance mode and just check out where the highlight is, uh, is sitting. Okay, I think this is great. Awesome. Let's turn back on the uh, two other pins. Cool stuff. So uh, what I like to do as well is to play around with the colors. I like to keep my key light uh, a pure white, uh, depending on, on the scene, of course. But for a neutral lighting, I like to keep it uh, at, at white. And then the rim light, I try either a bluish tint, uh, an aqua blue-ish, something like this, or maybe an, an orange. I think sometimes that uh, gives some interest to the picture. Could be th something like this. And then um, I take the fill light and make that a blue color. To give some contrast to um, this yellow rim light. So either like that or I do the opposite where I give the fill light a orange color and the uh, rim light a blue color. So we can actually quickly do that because now here in Keyshot 7 you can copy an HDRI and keep both um, inside your scene. So let's right click and hit the duplicate. So this could be a three point lighting alternative. And go ahead here, change the fill light color to orange. And go ahead and change the rim light color to blue. Cool stuff. So now you can alternate between these two and see what you think works best. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I really like this three-point lighting technique. It can be used for faces, but also um, products. Um, yeah, all kind of stuff, actually. Um, so go ahead and play with it and uh, have fun. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more like this. And uh, until next time, take care.